On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back to tear down another engine for you guys, and I hope you're excited about this one. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo and today we are here with my Audi 30T. This is the supercharged V6 from the 2011 A6 that I put an engine in. And this one died, um, it, it basically seized up. It came from Copart, a friend of mine bought it, got it home, made a key for the car, went and hit the start button and found out the engine was trash. So he sold it to me, that's how I ended up with the car. And of course I've since put a new engine in it, sold the car, and it's still out there driving today. Uh, obviously it came back and got a headliner after that and now it's all turned up and the owner's out there tearing it up. We have the old engine. And today we're gonna get this thing stripped. We're gonna get it all cleaned up. You can see this wiring harness is a giant spaghetti monster uh, design here. And we'll get all this stripped off and then we'll start tearing down this engine and show you guys you know, what's inside a 30T? And before we get there, tell me in the comments what you think the damage is to this engine. If you remember, when I pulled the exhaust off this car, the exhaust was completely full of coolant and it was wild. That coolant went everywhere. The floor was covered, I was covered. A lot of coolant came out of this thing. Uh, so my thought is it's a head gasket. It could have been water ingestion. We don't know. We're just gonna find out today. 100% Jake is here with me and we're gonna jump right in and uh, do a little time-lapse action of getting all of the hoses and belts and all of this uh, stuff that's hanging off the outside off the engine and then we'll jump into actually tearing this thing down and seeing what went wrong inside it. So let's jump right in. Well, we tried to get this thing on our engine stand, and of course, the bolts that go into this are bigger than the Chevy LS bolts, they're bigger than the R8's bolts. They are gigantic bolt holes. The bolts on my engine stand bottomed out immediately. I don't have anything bigger than that that's readily available, so we're doing this one partially on the floor at least before we have to switch to the forklift. So, we have to get the supercharger off because it's half of this thing. I promise it's the majority of this engine. So, there's uh, six bolts here that look like the only things holding it on. We're gonna jump right in and look at that, they come right off. I hope this is everything that holds the thing on, but we're about to find out. Oh, look at that, that is it. <laughs> That's it. She's loose and There's we pulled- some handy lifting points here. The supercharger is also the lifting points for the engine. So we are losing those right now, but we'll just slide the forks under it when it's time to get this thing in the air. We've also unhooked all of the vacuum lines, coolant lines, all that good stuff. So the supercharger should, Ooh, keyword should. I think these plastic pieces here need to come off first. Also T20s, the fastener for the solenoids right here. Wow, those are in there. Try number 10. Gotta be something underneath. There's a vacuum thing, I a see. clip. Other than that, oh, there's something on the bottom. Let me, let me know. Nope. It's free. I don't see. It's kind of heavy. A darn thing other than gravity. <clears throat> Dost thou even hoist? I, I do not hoist it. My back hurts. Oh! Welcome to the club. Ah, yes! Wow, this thing weighs a ton! Flip that turtle on its back. Let's, let's see what... Let's do flip this guy over. So we've got some cooling in here. Oh, there's not much to see. <laughs> we've got, it's definitely another Eaton. But yeah, we've got a inner coolers right there with coolant crossover pipes that are happily pouring coolant everywhere, so I can clean that up in a minute. And then we've got an electronic throttle body and a bunch of solenoids that control the thing right there, so. Then we've got a, a valley cover, which is full of sand. Wow! Audi, this engine is, is terrible. Very serviceable. What on earth? Where are the injectors? The injectors are under these, these are like injector girdles. Ah, what a mess. I was like, here's the DI line coming in and it splits right there. 
And then here, here's our high pressure fuel sensor in the valley. Man, can you imagine doing an injector job on this? Uh, I guess it pays well. There's always <laughs> that. I mean, it's got a few hours in it. Also, it's an engine out because you can't service any of this stuff without pulling this engine. So I would assume if you're doing injectors on a 3OT, sure you could do it in the car or you could pull the engine the way the factory wants you to. Whoop, swing and a miss. I have no idea what's going on at this point, but let's get a pry bar out and get these injectors out of here. So we're getting some of these vacuum lines out of the way real quick, the ones that went to the runners. We knew that was coming. That one's on me. So the injectors and the flaps are gonna try to come out as a unit here, it looks like. Okay. I have found that my favorite new Harbor Freight tool here, this Icon adjustable do everything wrench, uh, is really, really good at breaking the connectors on DI. Ah, dang it, I broke it. They're so garbage. Yeah, they're all, they've all been so hot, that they just keep breaking. A lot of connectors breaking on this engine. Okay, everything's off, pry bar time, here we go. Look at all the fuel coming out of there. Yeah. We're getting a lot of it. Yeah, you're, they're coming. I see it, but it shouldn't affect anything. There we go. Hey. Wow. A mess. This is insane. This engine's not going back together, I can tell you that much. This is the position sensor for the flaps that's buried in here. Here's our injector slash intake flap running system. So now we can show you guys the intake flaps doing their thing. This is wild. Yeah, they definitely went for, can we get an award for like worst, <laughs> most unserviceable engine? If there was an award, I think this is actually, it might be it. It's very reliable. There's not a lot of failures on these things, but it, it could win an award for, uh, most unserviceable engine. I feel like the uh, lack of failures might be changing as these get older. That's true. What with all the plastic. Somehow, even though these are DI injectors, the valves look brand new. So that's that's interesting. I was not expecting to see good looking valves. I was expecting to see Carbon City. Okay, the rail's loose. So now you get to start prying. Show us how it's done, dog. Yeah, you're getting there. It's just a whole lot of wiggling. So much fuel is in this valley. <laughs> Don't you want to like maybe throw a lighter in here and just kind of see what happens? It would solve a lot of problems. It's pretty far away from everything that matters. I think it'll be a short fire. Last pry. That's the, that's the one. Hey. And now you've got that sensor in there for the uh, runner position. Another injector manifold slash runner manifold slash you're good to go. Almost died. The time has come. We have the big hammer out. We get to pull the DI injectors. That didn't work. It pulled the, it pulled the tip right off the injector. That's unbelievable. Here we go. I got a good bite. Ready? Again, I guess this isn't the Audi tool. This is the Jag tool. Yeah. Pulling the injectors was a fail, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into pulling the valve covers because we know that will work. Big reveal. Here we go. Wow. Ooh. That looks terrible. Yeah, yes. That is full of water. Look at the mud. This is where all the mud was hanging out, right there. This is the new, uh, yeah, amphibious Audi A6. <laughs> you can put it where it'll go wherever you want. Just make sure the propellers turned on. Go wherever you want once. Well, <laughs> that's exactly right. This is free gasoline for my go-kart. I should go dump it in there. Mm. It's probably got water in it. Driver side valve cover. We'll hit this one real quick. And again, milkshake. This looks terrible inside. Milkshake city up in this engine. Wow. Well, we actually learned something new here. This giant manifold that's down in the valley is not a coolant manifold. The coolant is just here from the water pump out the back of the head. And of course there's a bunch of other coolant lines, little ones that are probably gonna fail inside this thing. But the giant manifold is actually the PCV because we have these hoses off of the valve covers right here. They all converge here in a Y and there's a solenoid in here and that goes into this manifold and there's a diaphragm and the supercharger 
has a connection on the bottom of it that goes into this manifold. It seemed like it would be for coolant, but nope, it is air uh, in some direction. Very hard to see what's going on with all of this, but there is a lot of plastic and it's all packed in here. Speaking of T20s, <laughs> well, that didn't work. I can guarantee you that. Look how clogged up the uh, actuators are for the valve, variable valve timing. Man, there is a fastener holding everything on this engine. There's about a million fasteners here. Wiring harnesses for days. So many sub wiring harnesses on this engine. Hey, you this got will one get more. us uh, quite a bit of room, actually. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> EGR valve delete. Yeah, there we go. Hey, <laughs> that's unbelievable. The stuff coming out of this thing. What a mess there. Okay, so now this. Oh, there's another Torx holding this guy on. Oh, and a bracket. Bonus bracket. Yeah. Yeah. Coolant crossover came out. That feels like it's made of nothing. Oh. Oh, it's the whole thing. It is. Oh, all of that gasoline just went, <laughs> just in, went the in the engine. <laughs> wow. Oh, these studs are. Mm, that's a. Hmm. Go forward. Yeah. Right, go. There we go. What a valley. Look, hold that thing up. Look at this insane manifold. Wow. And it does seem like there is coolant inside it as well. That's definitely coolant right there, right? Coolant and PCB. Huh. This this is absolutely crazy. Oh yeah, so it's just it's a molded in coolant Y pipe going. Oh here. I see. So this is the PCB. And this is the coolant Y pipe. <laughs> I wasn't wrong. I wasn't wrong. Yeah, we were, we were. It's this is just insanity that we've never seen before. I am both impressed and disgusted. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's sinking into the mud. <laughs> oh, gross! That's wild. Stick that pry bar in the mud. What on earth? It's he's gone now. <laughs> Somehow. There we go. Oh, that's the, oh, thermostat. It's the thermostat. Wow, you just have to take the whole engine down to get the same thermostat out. <laughs> oh good, it's just that simple. Yeah, no big deal. I did one on an LS the other day in like two minutes. The thermostat <laughs> goes bad in your 3OT. Order an engine, there's really nothing else you can do. Throw the car away. So the coolant down tubes, that's what we're calling these, are ready to come off. Hey, hey look at that. And now the uh, front head coolant crossover. <laughs> That made Yay. a big difference right there. Yeah, <laughs> engine's a lot smaller now. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, I guess we should probably pull some accessories and keep right on grinding. And we are back on the Audi engine, and we've got a couple issues, and these issues are the reasons we had to stop the other night. One of them is that JAG injector puller tool will not pull Audi injectors. So as you can see, these injectors here um, decap themselves as I tried to pull them off. So we're gonna try the worst way to pull a DI injector. And apparently it works amazingly. Just pry. Continental injectors on this one, not Bosch's. Too bad I ruined them. These injectors are probably going in the trash anyway, as almost everything in this engine probably will. I just wanted to tear it down to see what it looked like inside. These injectors are carboned up. Take a look at the tip of those things, they're fully black. You can barely even see the holes in them. So if we clean them up, you can see the Teflon seal right there, and you can see the tip, which is just covered in carbon and junk. There, right, it's cleaning up a little bit. You can see the holes for the pattern. Anyway, that's the DI injector out of the 3OT. <laughs> we knew that was gonna happen. If these needed to be saved, I would have just made one very serious mistake. That is for sure. All right, these last two injectors have decided to stay and that's what's gonna happen. All right, we put this thing up in the air because I got tired of working on it down on the floor. Um, this thing would not bolt onto the engine stand no matter what I tried. Uh, next up, we're gonna pull this DI pump off of here. Make everything disconnected from it. So, it's a triple square M8. Boy, that thing came out of there with some force. That spring is under pressure. So of course this is driven 
off of the cam. I'm sure you guys have seen how DI pumps work before, but if you haven't, uh, this cam here, on the other side, the other cam drives the vacuum pump that's sitting over here. And on this side, we have the DI pump. And this is the little uh, piston here. And basically what happens is it pushes on this thing. We might be able to spray some fuel out of it. Um, and there's a little cam lobe in here with a lifter on it. That lifter is moving up and down and that lifter pushes on that. So it sits there and just goes like this. And that's what creates the high pressure fuel. So this takes it from like 60 PSI up into the 1000 PSI range, 800 to 1000, so that you can inject the uh, fuel directly into the cylinder head. So that's a DI pump right there. That's all there is to it. And we have fuel pressure sensors right there and right there. And then here in the cap for the uh, DI pump drive where the lifter is and all that fun stuff, uh, we have a cam position sensor. And over here, it's right there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull off this drive and see what that looks like. There's an e torx on there, uh, E5, a tiny, tiny little guy. And these are studs The other things were mounted on, other bracketry. And there we go, got it popped loose. And now we'll jump over to good old T30, the entire engine. Ooh. The follower fell out in my hand there. Also the follower's keyed. You can see that key that uh, slides in its little keyway there. A little bit of damage on all of this, just from all the oily water and all that fun stuff. They're scoring in like a perfect line down that roller. And if you look on here, it looks okay, but it is definitely damaged. Uh, it has worn from poor lubricity. And this is a nice gasket. Cool little o-ring seal in a steel gasket there comes off and that's what's inside it and here's that keyed follower that drives the fuel pump it rides in here like this just moves back and forth running that fuel pump it's actually a tri-lobe so three equal lobes to drive the pump so for every one revolution of the cam, you get three bumps of the fuel pump. So it's like super fast. Okay, we're getting in here and we've got our uh, variable valve timing actuators. They look terrible. The fluid is gross and sludged up. Uh, I would say those are probably shot. So we'll just go ahead and pull them, toss them aside. This idler pulley is on what I think is the what, AC compressor bracket, alternator bracket, alternator bracket there. And that comes right off uh, as soon as the alternator is off. I think two bolts were holding that on. So we're good to go there. Oh, this is the tensioner. So water pump pulley uh, right here on the front. It is an M10. So we'll get that out here and we'll use way too much of an impact to get it off. So it should just plop right off with this thing. I don't know why it wouldn't. Start pulling all the pulleys. Okay. There you go. Cute little water pump, came right off. Water pump, actually in good condition. Bearings feel nice, no play. And on to the power steering, since we're up here. One of these times it's gonna rip it out of my hand. Luckily we have enough power to break any bolt loose, so. Pulley's coming loose there. There's our power steering pump. Ooh, I'm pretty sure that thing is junk. A lot of rattle in it. No shaft play, but it must have a coupler in it. Now we've got this water pump outlet. The water pump housing is gigantic. Uh, actually, it's the, it's the entire front of the block, isn't it? So the water pump is just a small little unit like some of the imports do. We'll pop that off. Probably gonna make a mess here. If there was anything that was going to make a mess in the teardown. It is this, and of course we also have this outlet here that uh, picks up the idler. We can pull this as well. T50 pulls this idler pulley off the front of the uh, water pump outlet there. <laughs> well, at least I'm gonna say it does, but it's very tight. So let's pop it off here with this. Oh, there we go. Back to the power tools. Actually runs nice. Pretty impressive for the mileage. It's a stock Audi piece, never been changed. 
130,000 miles around this car or something. It may have been a little closer to 100, but uh, still pretty impressive. All right, now we can get to the last couple of T30s. Knock this thing off. All right, there's our outlet. Hopefully the rest of the coolant that we're gonna deal with. Head gasket fix in there, you can see that. A Little bit of gold shimmer. They tried to fix the head gasket problem. Time for the water pump. This one's probably gonna spill some water too. Although I do think all of the fluids, for the most part, ended up in the exhaust manifolds on this car. It was crazy. There's the rest of the antifreeze. Water pump looks great. Audi pump. Ooh, the crank pulley has staked bolts. I don't think we can actually get these out. I'm not sure if a driver was inserted in this or what, but it looks like it has staked triple squares inside it. So we'll see. There's one. There's what I'm talking about. These bolts have been crushed. Well, crank pulley, look at that. You get to stay. Um, maybe it'll just come off with the crank. We've got another tensioner here. We can pop off the front of it. This was replaced at some point. It looks way too new. Since we were talking about the vacuum pump that's driven off the other cam, let's pull that right now. There's the vacuum pump. Ooh, full of oil. Wow, there's a lot of oil in that thing. I don't know if all that oil is just sitting in there and is a residual or if this thing, it says pumps that direction. And it does sound like it works. I guess we pull the power steering pump now because it's in the way. There's one bolt that is literally under the AC compressor, so now that has to come off. You honestly need to get this heat exchanger off of here, the oil cooler. I gotta say, I'm not in love with any of this. Uh, this engine needs way more tools than the R8 engine does, and most modern engines stick to just a few different fasteners to do everything. And on this engine, the 30T, we have a ton of different fasteners. So we're gonna get the AC compressor right now, though, I'll tell you that. All right, it's coming loose. Three bolts. Knew that was gonna happen. All right. Pretty nasty looking AC compressor, but we got it off there. I think the clutch is in the back of this thing. The only wires going to this compressor are back here. It always seems to be turning the pump. Interesting. So we need to get in these little crevices to get the triple squares off for the AC compressor mount. Uh, the 13 swivel should do wonders in here. There we go. Just keep dropping all the fasteners on this engine. I'll probably keep them, but they're also probably trash. Wow, there is just no good way to access a lot of these bolts. Power steering pump. Nice. Compact, noisy. No matter what you do, this engine has you searching for crazy new ways to access fasteners. We got it. There's the compressor's cast mount. With all of that stuff out of the way, we can finally get off the rest of the injector harness. This seems like a poor decision. So now we did all that. We can pull off this one connector to some solenoid that's probably some kind of variable oiling. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's buried in there. That is what it takes to get out that sub harness. So there's an EGR valve that's in our way back here. Uh, I'm sorry, the view is kind of tough just because of how this thing's sitting. Pop this EGR valve off, it'll help out. All right, and now everything else seems to be tins to get off this timing cover. Let's see? Hey, look at that, it falls right off. Uh, yeah, it's just RTV'd on, and that RTV didn't have much life left in it, that's for sure. 
There's our cam variator. Only one side of this thing. Interesting, only the intake side has variable valve timing. Uh, exhaust side is boring old direct drive. So as you would expect, we've got that oily, milky mess in everything. None of it looks particularly good, but we do now have uh, our timing cover off so we can keep right on going. I have a feeling oil is gonna go everywhere. We're gonna throw all these parts in that timing cover for when the mess gets created. Ooh, look at that. That is some goop. The oil came out of here as like a, <laughs> a gel. Nasty. So I'm gonna pull the next timing cover off the back over here. Obviously same drill, a whole bunch of tens, and it should just fall off and then we're ready to start pulling the cam girdles and actually taking a look at what went wrong with the engine. It took all of this time to pull uh, auxiliary stuff off, like just pumps and covers and just the insane amount of mounting and plastic pieces that make this engine work. Pretty crazy, uh, it's very complicated, a ton of different fasteners, and it takes a lot of time to work on, so it does make sense that these are usually always replaced as full units. Last one. Another timing cover off. Same views you saw before. Absolutely nothing new over here. The chains and the shoes appear to be in really good shape in this engine though, I gotta give them that. Before we pull all the timing gears off and uh, just decimate what's left of this engine, I do wanna turn it over a couple times so you guys can see it run. I can't turn it over. Wow. Uh, let me see if I can throw a little bit more leverage on here. I do know I turned this thing over a few times because we did eventually manage to turn it because we had to get the torque converter bolts out and pry bars let us do that. So there it turned. We are not gonna be able to turn this thing over quickly. It's going ever so slightly. All right, that's all, that's all the turning we're doing on this engine. I know we're going the wrong way, but there's not much I can do since it's basically seized up completely. Here we go. Time to lose all the timing on this engine. Ooh, that thing snapped back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. The impact, big old Milwaukee here, the problem solver, just snapped the uh, chain tensioner in half. If you look at this, it sheared that thing in half. It was hammering on it so hard. It put so much pressure on this hydraulic tensioner here. Uh, it was bouncing away and then it just found some oil and gave up. So now there's no tension left on the chain, uh, but even better, we can finally pop the chains off. So let's get our pry bar in here. Give it a wiggle. There's our variator. That shoe is worn and broken half as well. I don't know if I just broke it, but I sure don't see the pieces of it anywhere. Also on that other cam gear that wouldn't come off uh, from the chain drive over there, it had slack in it because I had already pulled everything else out and it was just sitting there like rocking back and forth. At least I assumed it was, even though it looked like it wasn't. So I just grabbed the pry bar, shoved it down in there, ran it out, came right out with the impact after that. Uh, of course, here's our other VVT solenoid. Another one that's absolutely nasty, full of oil jello. I took another direct hit to the eye with some oil. That wasn't exactly fun, but now we are down to the last three bolts. See if we've got it here. I would have expected it to pop up with some spring pressure on there. Maybe I missed a bolt. I hit with the pry bar, knocked this thing right off, and when you guys see the cam bearings, you'll be amazed that this thing was running. I would assume, ooh, I left it, I took a cam with me. Let me leave you guys a cam. Why is it stuck in the cam girdle? All right, cam bearings. I would say they're all wiped out. You can see ridges through every single one of them. When you come in close to look at the cams, you can see all the lines and wear through all of those. They are absolutely destroyed. This thing looks very rough inside. Uh, let's grab a, an inspection rag. That's what this is. Not that nice mirror wear you wanna see. Instead, it looks like it was ran through with gravel with all this water. That one's been hot. It's a little darker than the others. This one has a little bit of the mirror shine, but you can still see ridges through it. Man, this engine went through a terrible last few minutes of its life. That is a lot of wear. 
Well, we're trying to pop the head bolts off over here and it is a, a daunting job. I don't want to put the impact on it because we don't have the greatest bite in our fastener. So I'm doing it by hand and then I was going to use the uh, little impact to pull them out. Let's keep going here. Yeah, this is uh, this is no joke. Oh. I don't know if the ratchet let loose or the fastener did. Oh, the fastener. <sighs> okay, we got those four. And I think this one. Oh. Oh. I can hear my shoulders cracking as I do this. Usually I would expect the spring tension to go ahead and pop these things right off, but that has not been the case with this engine. Uh, let's see if we can get this one. Okay, not easily, again. I got it. Made a nice mess doing it. Let's put these on our layout bench. This is the timing chain tensioner off the uh, driver's side. And as you can see, it looks incredible for never being replaced. There's no wear. They, I think they broke because I was beating on them with the impact. But yeah, the shoes on both sides look really good. So uh, not bad for the mileage and the wear. Two bolts left on this head. We're about to make one of those world ending messes as you guys would expect. I expect the leaks to start any second now. Let's see how much coolant's really in this thing. Good old engines, always making coolant. Right to the last possible second. That head is loose. Well, there's our head. Quad valve, valves don't look that bad. Don't see any real issues. Uh, let's see if we can figure out where this head gasket failed. Everything looks pretty sealed so far. A little bit of a sealing anomaly right there. Guess we keep on hunting. Every fastener's out of this head and don't ask about the last one. Uh, I'm gonna remove it right now. How I did it is not important. Those of you that know, know <laughs> it's permanent. All right. Head bolts are supposed to be this easy. It's off. It's gonna take me a little while to get that back out of there. It may have involved a sledgehammer. Not too much coolant, honestly. There we go. That looks like our failure. Ooh, this piston is gooey. All these cylinders sure look the same. I can't tell if it was a head gasket or if they just sucked water up in the thing. Heads are off. We are finally home free tearing down this engine here. So if we just wiggle, there's our completely plastic dipstick, which is kind of interesting. Man, everything on this engine is just one of the nastiest engines I've ever torn down. I got to say, covered in gunk. Knock sensors coming off. And we're ready to flip this engine over. Throw these off to the side. They'll sense their final knocks. Yeah, they probably didn't like those knocks. All right, so grab a T30. Knock off these hard lines here that connect to this cooler. Let's sneak in here, see if we can get this flywheel off the wall. Uh, the engine is still chilling. I wish I could find a, a 13. Look at that. Ask and ye shall receive. A 13 that's not a swivel. We gotta try to get all of our power into this thing to break these bolts loose, that's for sure. Wow, I was not expecting the baby impact to pull flywheel bolts. Impressive. Getting the flywheel off was actually pretty insane. It took two pry bars and a ton of time but now it is off of there, and uh, I gotta say, that's that's a rough job to get it off there. And then there's that one big gap in the uh, reluctor ring that it uses to know its position. So there's one more uh, actuator right here, a solenoid. 
that's probably running something to do with the oil pump or some sort of bypass. It sits right in here, which makes sense. Oh yeah, this is definitely the oil pump. Here's the oil cooler. This is the water to water cooler, basically. It's a heat exchanger that takes the coolant temp and uses that to cool the engine oil, which means that this whole thing is the oil pump, which means this is probably some sort of actuator that controls oil pressure, uh, but in a single stage. I would assume it just has on off, not PWM control or anything fancy fancy. So we'll throw this down and let's flip this engine over. It is time to make the big mess where coolant goes everywhere. Oh, I was expecting this to make a big mess and it didn't. But you can see these are the oil passages. Oh, look at the sludge. Oil jello, just like before. That is nasty. The mess is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but now we can get the pan off of this thing. I did drain the pan before we even started to pull this thing out of the car, so it should be empty, but I have a feeling the uh, oil jello goo is gonna go everywhere. There's your oil level sensor right there. See that thing goes in the pan all the way. <laughs> we knew the goo was coming. Take a look at that pan. Full of coolanty oil sludge. The pickup screen's kind of clogged up. You can see some legit junk inside there. I think all this RTV failed. Kind of interesting. And we just a couple screws on here. And this should be the last one, it looks like. There's the baffle. Just a big chunk of plastic. Put this down in our other oil pan. And in here, we have corn. A big lump of knobs. Probably has a rod drive. It sure does have a rod drive. So we do have to get the back of this thing off. There's the oil pump, it's free. But it's captured by the rod coming out of the timing. So there's one interesting thing in here. This is one of those through studs that is probably a bolt that matters. So I am going to just hack this guy out of here, unfortunately. Or I'm not. As you know, we are never giving up. And uh, this was the kicker, this one screw. And of course, nothing would get it out. I tried double nutting it. Uh, either way, we got it out with the pliers eventually. Now, this thing should come right off. There we go. Goodbye, timing cover. More oil goo coming out of that. And you guys can see the exact same timing setup that we had on the R8. Um, instead of having the aux go to the, what would be the passenger side of the car, it comes over here to the driver's side of the car and drives that shaft that runs up to that oil pump there. So this is the aux chain for the oil pump. This here is the uh, main chain. And okay, so yeah, aux chain here, main chain here, and then the chains out to the heads here. So there you go. Works every time. I'm popping the entire timing gears to relieve the tension now. There's a, I think the whole thing's out. Sure looks like it. Now for our oil pump. That oil pump should drop out of the bottom after this. A little bump right there. Ooh, even these bearings are toast. So here's that secondary shaft. Try to grip the end of it and give it a wiggle. Oh, look at that, it's coming out. Oil pump drive right there. It can slide in and out. All the oiling passages became goo and just stopped working. You guys can see all the goo coming out of there. And that was probably the end of this engine real quick after it couldn't oil anymore.
This is interesting. Ah, oh, that's the actual oil to the shaft. So the oil comes from the oil pump. It looks like there's an oil passage right there as well. It comes through there, there's an O-ring, goes through that assembly right there, and there's oil for that bearing right there in the center. Pretty cool. At this point, can't even hold my tools. I knew that was gonna happen. There's the rest of the auxiliary. Oh, it has a balance shaft. Look at that. I had no idea this thing had a balance shaft in it. it still moves wonderfully. All the bolts just headed over to the solvent tank, did a little quick cleanup. Let's see if we can get the, cool. Whatever that is, oil pressure again. How many oil pressure? What's going on with this thing? Maybe it has a fail safe where it checks the oil pressure at the housing or one's the oil temp and one's, this is a one wire and another. Great looking timing shoe. Wow. I don't know if it's gonna be possible, but this looks like the balance shaft retainer. With, so this is like an end plate that keeps it. And let's find out if we can get the balance shaft out. It's not coming out though. Looks like it may be retained in more ways. There's only a couple bolts left in the upper pan. Of course, the lower pan was just that thin stamped metal up here, cast, Audi loves to do this. Oh, it's just pinned. There we go. There were no bolts left, but it's doweled or something. A little plastic windage tray in there, full of sludge. I wonder if this thing sludged until it died. Because we have not seen any very obvious head gasket damage yet. I mean, why would it have been full of coolant? The entire exhaust was full of coolant. So that is still very interesting. And uh, we got to go get a 12 point to pull these guys out. Uh, and let's pull the oil pump down too and see if this thing was pumping at all. Hey, look at that. It exploded open from the spring. Look at the spring. Look at the goo. Ooh, look inside the pump. Look at it run. I need the shaft to turn it. I can barely grip that other end. Yeah, you can see the pump doing its magic. It was still pumping something, but I'm sure it was not happy with sludge like that in it. Ooh. Well, we're pulling the last of the bolts out of here. I don't know if we're gonna get the mains off of this thing. Unfortunately, it's like the most important thing, but there's no way to take the crank pulley off this engine. I wish I had a plasma cutter. I would just yeet it off of here. I just stick it in there and let all those triple squares get destroyed because like I said, they were staked or destroyed in some way from somebody like misinstalling them or trying to make sure they'd never come out again. I can't get them out because no tool will fit in there. They have a really thin wall. There's not a lot of room to work. I got all these. So I'm gonna try to pull the mains and we'll see if we can just break that front cover off. Sledgehammer does a lot of things. You guys ever see an engine this impossible to turn when it's this far down? and the mains are still installed, unbelievable. I need a way to get a pry bar on there just to turn it, just to turn it a half an inch. I also don't think we're gonna get the mains loose today. I guess I could go to the pipe. I could go to the old jack pipe, but. Oh, there you go, Icon. How's that for a commercial? <laughs> yeah. Ever pulled mains with a wrench? Woo, dangerous. Wow, that thing, that just took all the torque in the world and the ratchet didn't break. I love these wrenches. Making some progress here. This is the wrong socket. So I'm doing what I can. Oop. 
This is an 11 on a 10 point. Uh, this is an 11 on a 10 mil 12 point again, because I don't have anything that small in 12 point. And we did break all of these loose with the jack handle and that same icon wrench. That wrench has seen some things, I'm telling you. There we go. That should have separated the bottom end as far as we're gonna get. Let's hit it with a hammer. Getting close to separating that screw. I will not lose. Never one to give up. Sawzall, chisel, sledgehammer. I got the bolts that are behind the balancer cut and we hit him with that cutting chisel until it came apart. And then I hit this with the sledgehammer until it came apart. And we can finally see inside this engine. You can actually still see the machining in that bearing and it's not all the way down to the copper. Interesting. Thrust bearings, still have Audi logos on them, look okay. We found the real problem guys, it spun a bearing. Hop right in here and take a look at this bearing that has been in there going round and round and it's hot, hot. You can see this rod is hot, hot and this isn't just dirt. You can see there's a normal rod. This rod has turned black from the heat and the oil has like kind of cauterized on the side of it. Ooh. This thing got incredibly hot. So oh, look at all the heat in there where it got hot. You can see the crank itself. Yeah, it's, that's color changing. Let's get some light in there for you. Color changing crankshaft. Check that out. So much heat in this thing. That bearing is what killed this engine. This one looks great. Not, not amazing, but good. This spun bearing was the one that ended it all. So I tried to pop it out. It's not happening. That thing's on there. And in this cylinder, I can't move the engine at all. It is stuck. But if you look at all the damage in there, this, you can feel it in your finger, not in your fingertip. You can feel the divot in your finger. It's so big. So that cylinder is toast. All of this thing is toast. Honestly, I think this engine gave 198% for uh, the last owner that killed it. I think it was dying and they kept pushing it and kept pushing it. I, I don't see any damage that looks like a head gasket for real. I don't know why the exhaust was level full of coolant that all dumped out when I pulled it off, but it's very obvious that this thing got incredibly hot. I bet this engine did an incredible feat before it took its last breath. It's, it's tough to kill an engine. Like you have to really hurt them or, or you know, the factory put too much RTV in them. It's one or the other. It's either the simplest thing or it was run into the ground. And this one was run into the ground. Here is our final RCA on the Audi engine teardown. This is that bearing that spun. I had to beat that off there with the sledgehammer, but you can see that it's destroyed. And if we get in here real close, you can see all the copper deposits on the crank. It's just absolutely ruined. You guys can see every little bit of that right there. And uh, take a look at the oil hole. You can see that it was trying to get a little bit of oil in there, but it really uh, must have just stopped oiling. So I think the RCA is the sludge caused an oiling issue. And then the main got hot and spun after the heat expanded everything in there. And that was the end of it. So uh, take care of your engines, change the oil, and hopefully this won't happen to you. I, like I said, I really hated this engine, but now I, I kind of think it was just beat on too hard. That's the end of this. I'm gonna take one picture of the layout. This is all the auxiliary junk that came off of it. It goes on kind of forever. It's unbelievable. There's the harness and over here in the parts washer, our CRC smart washer is the bolts that came out of it. And this is just wild. I mean, there's gotta be a couple hundred fasteners in there. I wish I could get the rods off, but I can't because the engine will not move at this point. Uh, I could probably beat on it with a sledgehammer and maybe get it to bump up a hair and maybe get it to turn, but honestly, it's just fighting and fighting and fighting. So that is the end of this teardown. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchjrgo.com for cool shirts, not like this, and please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you 
next time. If you guys want to know how stuck this engine is after I tried about everything, I just took the sledgehammer and beat both ends of the crank as hard as I could to try to get it to back off just a hair so I could turn it. That didn't work. Like it will not move. It is absolutely seized. Honestly, let's see if I can move a piston. The other pistons are at TDC, but that's the end of this. I, I worked hard to get every bolt out. Uh, it's going right into the back of the truck and off to Wichita material recovery. Done with that engine. It was, uh, this was a bear. It was supposed to take like, you know, a quick, fun little, you know, my usual, maybe two hours to pull an engine down. I probably have like five hours in this now. It's a nightmare. So uh, it did not go easy into the night. And that's exactly what happened to it with the last owner too. It, uh, it did not go easy into the night. This thing had a bad life. I'm sorry, Audi. I feel bad for, I didn't feel bad for it. At first I was like, nah, what a junk engine. And I don't love the way it's designed. I don't love this engine but I feel bad about how it was treated. It was truly destroyed.